Hey, welcome. Thank you for coming to listen to the Lichen Sclerosis podcast. My name is Kathy, and this is our journal of learning about and living with lichen sclerosis. Each week, I either research or talk to someone about an aspect of lichen sclerosis and bring you the information so you don't have to go searching. This week, I bring you Dr. Cynthia Wesley, known as Dr. Sin on social media. And Dr. Sin is an expert on what she has termed the private face. So we got this face and we got the other face. And she is an expert on all things grooming and taking care of the skin on the private face, which is amazing because we all got questions, right? So once again, make sure you have your pen, your paper, or however you're going to take notes because you're going to get lots of them. Or we've got it taken care of for you on our website and the link will be in the show notes. As always, I want to thank our sponsor, Lichen Sclerosis Support Network, whose mission is to get people diagnosed sooner and to educate providers so we get the quality care that we deserve. If you haven't checked out our private membership yet, make sure you check out the link in the show notes. Without further ado, here is my conversation with Dr. Cynthia Wesley. This information is for educational purposes and does not constitute medical advice. Speak to your medical professional before making any changes to your care. Dr. Cynthia, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to call you Dr. Sin since that's what you go by. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Dr. Cynthia, what is it you call it? The garden? (laughs) Well, I'm a vulvar skin specialist, and I like to call the area the private face. Because it is important for every woman to realize that the private face is just as beautiful as the public face. Love that. Especially with lichen sclerosis, we tend to lose a lot of that femininity, that feeling of being whole, so to yes. say, when we get diagnosed. And so I love the the private face because it's some it's a it's a way to get back in touch with that part of our body that kind of gets severed sometimes when we get a diagnosis. So that is beautiful. Well, thank you. And you're so right on the money with what you're saying. And that's what this podcast is all about is bringing awareness and also bringing tips to get back to that mental space we were before we were diagnosed and that trauma of the diagnosis happen. Today, we're going to talk about grooming that private face. We all know lichen sclerosis, it changes the skin of our vulva. And whether that's white patches, whether that's irritation, lesions, fissures, all of those things we all experience in different variations and different symptoms. But we all have that fear of if I wax or if I shave or if I use this chemical down there, is it going to cause a flare? Is it going to hurt? So I'm so happy that you're here because you are an expert in this subject and I'm dying to hear your expertise. Where do you want to start off? Let's do, let, <laughs> let me do that. You know, I think it's important to really just start off with basic hygiene, right? Okay. Well, every woman, regardless if you're choosing to remove the hair or not, what are the basic everyday pearls that women, all women, and especially women with lichen sclerosis should be considering? That's where I would like to start if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Go yeah. for it. So we all know with lichen sclerosis, we want to avoid friction at every cost right? Or if there is friction, what are we doing to kind of protect the skin? And so I like to start with what every woman does on a daily basis. And that's with with washing. Okay. All right. Well, actually, let's start with restroom habits because we do that a few times a day. 
Yes. Right. And so normally when a woman goes to the restroom, we use some toilet paper to wipe. And we've all been taught to wipe from front to back Mm -hmm. uh, to decrease our risk for infection. And uh, we wash our hands and we go on about our day. Right. Well, is there anything extra that a woman with lichen sclerosis should be doing or should consider? And my answer is yes. All right. Because we're trying to decrease friction. I would like for every woman with LS to really consider a bidet. Okay. okay. A bidet, for those who don't know, you've probably seen them. I know the first few times I saw one, I'm like, what the heck is this? You know, <laughs> um, you're supposed to squirt water up there. Really, what's going on? But if you think about it, when you go to the restroom, you're just trying to remove that residual urine or even feces if you have a bowel movement. And what better way to do it than to, to squirt some water in that area? Right. So with not having to use toilet paper to actually remove these contents, then we're decreasing our risk for irritation. Mm -hmm. So even with using the bidet, I still like for women to use toilet paper just to pat dry. Okay. Okay. There's so many new bidets out there now. It's, uh, and they're not as expensive as they used to be. And you do not have to change your entire toilet. Okay, they had these that you can add to your your current toilet. So that's something that I would uh, strongly recommend for women to look into. Now, I still want you using some toilet paper or, or something. Okay, just to pat dry once you use the bidet because you do not want to leave just that additional moisture that can end up being drying on the skin. So that's something to think about. I know some women who who don't have bidets, but they use a peri bottle. Yeah. So they use that to kind of after they use the restroom. So same concept, but kind of low budget and portable. <laughs> right. Exactly. And that's the key. It's portable. So if you think about it, if you're using a peri bottle, the tip of the bottle is not touching your skin. Right. right. So you're not necessarily worried about um, it becoming dirty. Mm -hmm. I do recommend that you keep the tip in some type of uh, container, okay? okay? Even if it's a little, you know how you get those little jewelry bags that when you go uh, to even Claire's Boutique or something like that and it has your earrings in it, mm -hmm. just a little bag where you could keep that in. A velvet bag would be ideal, right? Oh, okay. Because it's going to keep it dry. Sometimes when you put it in a plastic bag, then it can have a little bit more moisture if it's super hot outside. Okay. And we don't necessarily want to create that. So ideally, a little a velvet pouch just to keep the tip of it in would be great. Awesome. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. So just something to consider when you're on the move that uh, you can have with you. And then, of course, you can use the tissue paper to pat dry. Now, the other thing that I recommend for women with LS is to keep the skin moisturized, mm -hmm. right? Because we always want to protect the skin. So even with the restroom habits, which kind of is starting to transition into our hygiene cleaning habits, is that every woman should be using a moisturizer. And at a minimum, you should be using it once a day. Okay. For those who, and that's like a brand new diagnosis of LS, it's really not that bad, at least once a day that you're using a moisturizer down there. If you're noticing that your symptoms are progressing, then you want to be aggressive with the moisturizer and even consider using it after you go to the restroom, okay, okay. where you're reapplying the moisture to that area because you pretty much just removed it with squirting the water and then pat and dry. Right. So I do want you to consider that. I I am guilty. I don't use a moisturizer. I know mm -hmm. some women who do, and they some women do use it every time that they use the restroom. Some just once a day. But I just I've I've always felt like I didn't need it only because I didn't feel any dryness or and my symptoms aren't like severe. I just have the a little bit of the itching on mm -hmm. just on the one spot and other than fusing and things like that. But I guess it's more to preventative, I guess, or kind there of maintenance. Is. 
We're okay. all about prevention because we do know with LS is that it is a progressive chronic disease, right? Mm-hmm. So we want to prevent you from ending up with fusions and things of that nature. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So I strongly recommend for all women with LS, I really, I'd strongly recommend for number one, even if you don't have LS, every woman that's removing the hair from down there should be using some sort of moisturizer. Okay. If we can talk about the different types. But if you have LS, we want to prevent progression of your disease as much as possible. So I strongly recommend, even in your case, if it's just a little area, not too bad, a little itchy here and there, always use a moisturizer. Okay, I will add that. And so what's your favorite type of moisturizer? Well, I have my own moisturizer in my intimate skincare product line called Beauty Below. And we will be launching at the end of summer. And women can go to beautybelowmd.com to sign up for all of our promotions as far as launches, new products, everything. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Now, old school treatment that works very great is coconut oil. Mm, that All is right. a popular one. Yeah. yeah, you could go to the baking goods section in your local grocery store, get you a small jar of coconut oil. I recommend that you keep that jar in the bathroom, not in the kitchen. OK, so mm-hmm. it's only used for you and your private face and just apply the coconut oil. Now, sometimes with coconut oil, for those who have a history of acne down there, Valvar acne, it can for for a small few cause issues or increase your chances for acne if you have a strong history of acne down there. Mm -hmm. So if you fall into that category, I don't want you using coconut oil. You may want to consider, you know, olive oil or something of that nature. What about smell? I have, I'm thinking of one lady in particular who she says every time she uses coconut oil, it gives her an awful smell. Like she says, like she's been just running in the jungle it's like awful and she can smell it through her clothes and so is there do you think it's something in the coconut oil that's reacting with her and what can other what other can she use other than just coconut oil okay so coconut oil itself it it is scented and some women like the smell coconut oil some women don't however it's not going to cause infection And so my concern for her is, is there something else going on that's contributing to that smell? And maybe we're rubbing the area, you know, what's inside is kind of coming out and that's what she's smelling. So I would recommend being evaluated and just making sure that there's nothing else happening that like bacterial vaginosis, something of that nature that could be contributing to uh, a change in the smell down there. Okay. Now, so you she said can use olive, olive oil. oil. Yeah, okay. that's fine. She used olive oil down there. Or she can go to beautybelowmd.com. And I have a custom moisturizer made specifically for the private face. All the ingredients are very healthy, okay, for the skin down there. And I think that she will really like it. Awesome. I love that. I've also heard avocado oil. Is that Okay. Yes. Okay. Avocados are great and it's perfectly okay to use avocado oil. You know, you always want to look for ingredients that are healthy for the skin and it's mm-hmm. okay to try different things and see what works for you. My recommendation for every woman when you're trying a new product, if it's natural or not, you want to do a little skin test. Okay. Yes. So I recommend going to the top of your mons and the mons is where if you're standing in the mirror, and you have hair down there, the area that you can see between your legs, okay? Before you go between your legs, that's your mons, okay? It's below the belly button and you can actually see it if you're standing in front of the mirror. So just go to like the top right or left corner, apply a little application of whatever product it may be, maybe apply it at night and see by the next night if you've had any type of reaction to it. 
I'm all about testing. I say yeah. that all the time. Yes, indeed. Yes, don't indeed. just slather it on because you don't know how you're going to react. <laughs> right. So love that. Love that. All right. We're using water to clean. We're pat and dry and we're moisturizing. What about just real quick, uh, since we're talking about cleanliness and grooming, mm-hmm. uh, washing and showering. Yes. So with washing, I like to talk about the shower separately from the bathtub, if that's okay. okay. With showering, I do not recommend loofahs, okay, for okay. women with LS, because that's going to increase more friction. So even these little loofah things, you know, I, I don't recommend those. I What I do recommend is using a washcloth, but a washcloth for babies. Because oh, okay. it's a lot softer than the washcloths, you know, that we buy for us in any department store. The other thing is you would, can even consider using uh, a mitten. You know, mm. the little mittens that we buy for babies to keep them from scratching their faces. Yeah. It's yeah. perfect to put on your fingers and use that to clean. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's soft. It's just so something to think about. All right. Now, with doing that, uh, there are a few things you need to do when you are in the shower. After showering, you know, you go, of course, you're going to rinse very well down there, but you're also going to rinse whatever type of washcloth that you're using. You want to make sure you get all the residual soap out of it and you want to hang it to dry. Okay. It's also important to make sure that you're changing out that washcloth at least every three days. Because you do not want to get infection down there because we're, you know, using a cloth, using the same cloth for the last two weeks. And so, you know, there's some bugs that are living on there. Right, right, right. 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 So at, at a minimum, every three days, you need to change out the washcloth. Now, as far as what you're using to wash with, that's another discussion, right? You will hear many of my colleagues to say, all you need is water down there. Yes, I've heard that a lot. That's all you need. You will hear them say the vagina is a self-cleaning organ, right? And it is a self-cleaning organ, the vagina. There is a difference between the vagina and the vulva, okay? The vagina is internal. And I'm sure all my LS women already know this. You know, I preach that. The (laughs) vulva is external. Yeah. Now, it's important to know, and if you want to use just water, it is perfectly okay. I have absolutely no problems with that. I have no problems with women who choose to use water or a product only using their hands to clean. Mm-hmm. That's okay as well. You just really want to be very mindful of your fingernails. Make sure that they are nice and trim and, and shaped and that you don't have little areas that are nicks because you can nick your skin even with your fingernails. And that's Mm -hmm. not fun, especially if you have LS, okay? As far as the wash itself is concerned, some women want to use a wash versus water, and I have no problem with that as well. When you think about it, we have the same sweat glands in our private face that we have in our armpits. Oh, Okay. Okay. They're the same sweat glands. Okay. So if we are comfortable only cleaning our armpits with water, then so be it. So if a woman wants to use a wash for her private face that has the same sweat glands that's in our armpits, I don't think we should shame her about that. Right. Right. We should just educate her about how she is picking the products that she's using to wash with. All right. So we all hear about, you know, you want to make sure that is uh, paraben free, sulfate free, fragrance free, all those things. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of women, those are not major factors. Mm. Okay. If you're smart about your selection, parabens are just what we use to preserve products. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a lot of parabens, like for example, in shampoo, and it increases your shelf life. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to change that product out, you know, every time you turn around. So they're not necessarily a bad thing to have parabens. Sulfates are what causes the lather 
you know, we, with your soaps that allows it to move all over your body, makes you feel good, makes you feel cleaner. It doesn't necessarily make you cleaner. You just feel cleaner because of the lather. Some women, very few, can have some irritation with the product, the sulfates that we use to cause lather, and some don't. Some people, from an environmental perspective, are against sulfates because some sulfates come from palm oils, Mm -hmm. and they have all these palm oil plantations in the Amazon, and they feel like it's destroying the Amazon, all those things. But if you don't have problems with products that lather up, it's okay to continue to use products that have sulfates. Okay. Now, when it comes to fragrances, some women, and it's very, very few, can have irritation to fragrances. And what you want to look at is high quality fragrances. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as far as the beauty industry is concerned, You don't have to list what your fragrance is, what the combinations are, right? Because everyone has their little secret smell and how they came up with that. But once you make a final product, anything that you add to it after the final product is made to change the smell is considered a fragrance, Mm -hmm. even if it's natural. I can add aloe vera to it afterwards to change the scent or vanilla, okay, which is very good for the skin. Now, technically, I can't say that it's fragrance free because Uh, I added it after the product was created. Got it. Now, people, companies, they do not have to list what their, their fragrances are. But for those who are very mindful of this concept, and who are using what we call high quality fragrances. That means products that are actually good for the skin down there. They will usually tell you in their labeling what they're using for fragrance. Okay. okay. They, in their marketing, they would say something about, you know, rose hip, papaya seeds, or, you know, something of right. that nature. Right, so right, right. the phrase I like to use for my women when they are in the grocery stores or they're searching online, because a lot of us shop online now, you want to uh, flip it, okay, before you pick it. Flip it before you pick it. Flip it (laughs) over, look at the back, see what it's saying, and then make an informed decision on what you want to use. Do not let others tell you merely because they're saying, Oh, I'm paraben free, sulfate free, fragrance free. I'm a vegan product, blah, blah, blah. That is great for you. All right. Right. There may be something that got a little lather because it's going to help you spread it all over there. Right. It may be a very good product before you because we all been trained to avoid these phrases. You're not even picking those. Okay. So I didn't even know that or think about that. That makes perfect sense about the fragrance. Because a lot of the time when you hear, oh, you need fragrance free, you're thinking, oh, yeah, because they're using chemicals to make those fragrances. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can add these natural products to change the smell. And they're, you know, just like, uh, coconut oil so you now you're taking that coconut oil and making it in putting it in the product to change to make it smell like coconut okay that makes sense so I, I love that Thank yes you. I, I know a lot of the time when they are saying don't use these washes on your vulva or things like that they're worrying about the ph balance of That's the vagina but how do you counter that then Well, it's a pH balance. That's the big question. Is the pH of that product, you know, close to what the pH is for the vagina? And there is no industry. The government, no one is, it monitors what the pH is on products when they say they are pH balance. Okay. Okay. We are dependent on the manufacturer to be honest Honest. about that. Okay. But you, anyone could go get their own pH strips, right. And drop it in the solution and confirm what the pH is. So that's just something to consider. Okay. And so just for those of us who don't know, what should the pH be? So the vagina itself is pretty acidic. Okay. It's, 
So a neutral pH is a pH of seven. When you get to the vulva and the vagina, you're around about four and a half, okay? okay? Somewhere between four and five. So we don't want anything that's over seven, okay? okay? Because that's getting too far off base. But products that have a pH of about five to six, somewhere in there, it's perfectly okay to use. Okay. Okay. So that's what we're looking for, five to yes. six. Okay. Just stay below seven. How about that? Below seven. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So now you said that's the shower and you said you treat the bath a little different. Well, with the bath, the important thing is the the amount of time that you spend in the tub. Oh, okay. I know I've been guilty of just relaxing. Luxuriating in that bathtub. Yeah, I'm in there for like 30, 40 minutes. Sometimes I turn the water on just to get it hot again, right? Mm. It, It works against me. Have oh. you done that and noticed that your fingers are wrinkled and your yes. skin is a little wrinkled? You're drying out your skin when you do that. Oh. And the last thing you want to do is to dry it out. So it's okay to take a bath, but limit your baths to 15 minutes. Okay. Sorry, but still a good 15 minutes is really all you should be doing with women who have LS. So I know the standard is we need to soak 15 to 20 minutes. So before we apply our, our steroids, so that's perfect right up in there. As soon as you're, you hit that sweet spot, then you're good to go and Mm -hmm. and apply your steroid ointment. Awesome. That is correct. Yes. And as far as long baths, as far as like products in the bath, like bath oils and, you know, bubble baths and things like that. What's your stance on that? Once again, flip it before you pick it. Okay. okay. I, I I hate to tell women to completely avoid putting anything in a bathtub because that's really not fair. There are a lot of things that you can put in the tub that's not going to hurt the skin down there. Some women add essential oils and that's completely okay. You just don't want to add anything that's known to be an irritant. Okay. Okay. Like, for example, cinnamon has been shown that it can help with inflammation and things of that nature. However, it can be quite irritating to the skin down there. So that's something even in an oil base, I wouldn't want women adding to their bath water. Yeah. Tea tree oil, especially if you have like some cuts and fissures. Right. That can be... uh burning yeah not fun right <laughs> not fun you gonna be jumping out of that bath water real quick yes all right so now we're clean we know how to go to the bathroom let's talk about the hair on our private face a lot of us have irritation let's say when we are doing anything very physical where we're sweating walking a lot running and A lot of the time when we do get a diagnosis, we feel like, okay, we can't groom anymore because it's going to irritate, it's going to cause a flare. And so we have to find that balance of, okay, we're, we're not going to groom, but we're still getting really irritated when we are doing all of these physical things. Right. So what's your, what, what do you suggest? What can we do? as far as grooming that area when we have LS? So when it comes to the hair down there, the absolute safest thing to do is not remove it, Mm -hmm. okay? That's the absolute safest thing to do. But for some women that can affect their quality of life. First off, trimming it, even if you're not removing it, trimming the hair can really help with the sweating and stuff that some women get. Some women feel that they can't use any type of powder down there. And that's Mm -hmm. not true. If you find a powder that has a cornstarch base, that is perfectly okay to use on the private face. All right. So that's something to go ahead. Are we using the powder along with like the oil, the the whatever moisturizer? moisturizer? You definitely want the moisturizer on there. Let's say that with working out that you become very irritated with the sweating and things of that nature. Some women apply the powder prior to working out. Okay. okay. Just to kind of decrease that, that friction, you know, things of that nature. I like for the moisturizer to set in 
before okay. you apply the powder. It seems to work a little better in that scenario. So that's number one. If you choose to keep the hair, which is the safest thing to do, it is still perfectly okay to, to groom. You can still trim the hair. OK. And if you're having issues with uh, a lot of sweating or when you sweat, you could consider a powder that is a cornstarch base. OK. Perfect. I will also with my product line have a wash. I have a spray that helps with the sweat down there. OK. Oh. That has natural ingredients that are very safe and protective of the private face. Perfect. So that's one thing you could do. Now, if you're just like, I have to have this hair removed, at least my bikini line, because I like to go swimming. I don't want to have this issue. Then the most damaging thing that you can do for the skin and increase your risk for friction is actually shaving the hair, especially really? if you're using a multi-blade razor. Okay. Did not know that. Yes. So that would be the, the actually the most damaging that you could do. Okay? okay. So if you just have to shave, it's very important that the skin is warm and that it's washed. Okay. So uh, of course I recommend shaving in the shower. It's important to use a good shave gel, preferably shave gel for women that has aloe vera in it. Okay. You want to use a single blade razor. And make sure that razor is sharp, okay? okay? And you want to go the same direction as the hair growth, not okay. against it. You don't want to go over that area multiple times because all of those things will increase your risk for friction, for tears, all of that, okay? And even ingrown mm -hmm. hairs. Wow. So those are just things to think about. And then you need to protect the skin after you shave, Right. Okay. Some type of calming ointment should be applied to the skin. I'm blown away because a lot of the razors, like they all have multiple blades. So it's like, I thought that was, you know, the way it's supposed to be that you get, you get two, you know, <laughs> two cuts in one. <laughs> well, I mean, you can, it's just going to increase your risk for, especially for women who have curly hair or coarse yes, hair, coarse it's hair. going to increase your risk for ingrown hairs. Okay. okay. Which in turn is definitely going to cause more inflammation down there and scarring. Right. Yeah. My hair is really coarse. So sometimes I do have to go over it multiple times because it's, it's, you're not going to get it all in one mm -hmm. shot. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I feel that. So razors are the worst. So right. Let's so next in line would be waxing. Okay. okay. With waxing, I recommend that it's not a DIY, do it at home thing. You really should go to a professional. You want to find a professional that actually uses an oil that's placed on the skin to protect the skin prior to waxing. Oh. Okay. Because they apply the oil, they blot dry the skin, and then they apply the wax and the wax will remove the hairs, but not remove the skin along with the hairs. Yes. Okay, so that's something to think about. Once again, they need to be applying a after balm to the area to soothe the skin immediately. Yeah. Right. Is is waxing safe though with LS? I mean, so obviously you don't want to do anything when you're in the middle of a flare because the your skin is already, you know. I, I would recommend avoiding waxing with LS and also some women use sugaring, okay, to remove exactly. hair. Sugaring is a hair removal process that goes dates back to ancient Egyptian time. OK, oh. so they use a paste that is made of uh, sugar, water, lemon, sometimes essential oils that's rolled into a ball. It's applied to uh, the hairs and it works better than waxing because with waxing, they apply the wax the same direction as the hair growth and mm -hmm. then they remove it the opposite direction. That's going to cause shearing and leave little tips when the hair cuts off, right? With sugaring, they apply it the opposite direction of the hair growth, but remove it 
the same direction as the hair growth, and it increases the chances that they remove the entire follicle, follicle right. versus the hair breaking off. And sugar is a natural exfoliator as well. Okay, mm. so you get a little bit of exfoliation. However, both procedures, sugaring is better than waxing from a, when you're looking at as far as trauma to the skin, but they both can cause problems if you're not careful, especially with lichen sclerosis. A hair removal cream would probably be better than shaving, waxing, or sugary. Okay. okay? Because with the depilatory, it's weakening the hair and then you're wiping the hair away. So it's less trauma to the skin. Right. The issue has been throughout the years is that all these products is do not use on a genital area. You know, all these things you can use it on some you can use on a bikini line. But for women with thick hair, coarse mm-hmm. hair, curly hair, some of those products just do not work. You have to do and, it like longer than it says and then you risk burning. Yes. Been there, done that. No. Right. <laughs> And, you know, that was an issue for me. And that was my pain point. I cheered in college. I was actually a NCA All-American cheerleader. And there was no way being at a Division I school up in the air in the hill stretch on ESPN was I going to have a shadow down there, right? Right. Uh, But I couldn't really groom the same way that my counterparts on the team could groom because their hair a lot finer than mine's. And what worked for them didn't work for me. And so throughout the years, I was just always trying to figure it out. It became a point of pain and embarrassment for me. And it was my driving force for really creating this product line. Because once I became a gynecologist, I'm like, I'm not the only woman out here struggling like this, right? Right, right. And so part of our product line is also my hero product is a hair removal cream. Okay, that is strong enough for coarse and curly hair, but protective to the private face. Love so uh, women with LS should be able to use it. Once again, I still recommend doing a little spot treatment, making sure that it's uh, OK for you and that you're not going to have a reaction because I don't care how natural a product is. Someone can have a reaction to anything. Think about it. Some people are allergic to peanut butter, right? Yes. Not that in general, peanut butter is harmful. So I truly recommend all women testing prior to using. I call it the carpet test. Just like you do put something on your carpet, you need to test it in the corner. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And even when you are applying your moisturizers, um, you you have to, once again, be careful with just aggressively using your hands. Yes. For some women, I like for them to use like just a little uh, cotton swab, put the moisturizer on there and then gently apply the moisturizer. Okay. You know, we talked about sweating down there and some women like to wear the skinny jeans and all that. We need to avoid that, especially if you have LS. You want to avoid the G-strings. Okay. There are incredible, beautiful, sexy underwear out there now. You know what I mean? Some of them are even seatless that you can use to have the same effect, right? Right, But you're not destroying the skin down there. So that's something else that women should consider. And actually, if you have LS, you know, I'm always preaching the cotton seat is key. Cotton seat, cotton seat, it absorbs, you know, all those things. But women with LS really should consider silk underwear. I've heard that. Yeah. So what is the science behind that? Because we, I've always thought, Oh, so it's more silky. Um, yeah, yeah, obviously, then it's just going to slide off. I right. love that. Okay. And you always have to look at the seat because now they're adding, even to silk underwear, they're adding that cotton seat. So sometimes it can be difficult to find um, silk underwear that the seat is actually silk. Now, okay. it's not as absorbable as cotton. So that means you might have to change them out a little bit more frequently. Okay. That was my next question. Yes. 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 So, you know, you have to take the good with the bad. You can wear them, but you're going to have to change them out more frequently. Okay. Got yeah. it. 
So there's one more grooming technique that I know of. Yes. And it's permanent. The laser uh, hair removal. And it's great. Laser yeah. hair removal is wonderful. Yes. And I'm okay with women using that as an option for hair removal if they know they don't want the hair down there. I do not recommend having it done when you're on your cycle or if your cycle is getting ready to start, you're more sensitive then. It could be a little bit more painful at that time, even though we do place, you know, in a anesthetic on the area itself. You still want to avoid it when you are on your cycle or if it is getting ready to start. It will, the hair will grow back fewer and fewer. Also, just regular skin rejuvenation with laser, with phototherapy down there is very beneficial to women with LS. Can women get laser when they're not in remission? Well, I would recommend to try to wait until you are in remission uh, okay. because you're when when you're in the midst of a flare, it, it's irritating, it's painful, and you don't want to add anything that could potentially irritate the skin. Okay, mm -hmm. and when you have the laser hair removal, it can feel like little uh, rubber band pricks, kind of like to the skin, and it's just best to avoid any procedures until you are in remission. Okay. Yeah. Now, another option as far as hair is a medication called Veniqua oh. that sometimes we use on women who have hair on the face okay. to kind of to thin that hair and to prevent growth, regrowth of that hair. And it takes a few months for you to really see a difference. But adding that to one of these hair removal techniques, especially if you have coarse or curly hair, may be beneficial. Is that like a topical or yes, is that it's like, a topical? Oh, oh, it's a topical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I had not heard of that. Yeah. That's that's very interesting. Yes. I like that. Okay. Let's recap from worst to best. We're going with razors. Correct. Waxing. Correct. Then the sugaring, cream, sugaring. the sugaring, sugaring. Yeah. yeah. And then the cream and the best is laser, uh, laser removal. That would be correct. If, and that's not coming back. The same way. So, which is good because, yes. you know, you don't have to do it as often. Right. So that's, that's good. Is there anything else that we need to know as far as grooming our private face? Well, I'm going to say it with the voice. I know. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> the private face. <laughs> the, you know, the big thing is we just have to be uh, cautious of our daily habits and even uh, the clothes that we wear. OK, mm -hmm. we talked about we touched on loose fitting clothes, loose fitting clothes is the key. And even if you find the seatless panties that are really cute, you don't want to have tight jeans on with those yeah. okay? because that can uh, be irritating. Some women say, well, I just won't wear any panties at all. And in certain right. situations, that's OK. If you got your free flowing sundress on and it's hot outside, you don't want to wear any panties. I am perfectly OK with that. I recommend for women at nighttime to try to go without underwear just to allow the skin down there to breathe. But it's it's very important that if you choose not to wear underwear, that you do not have tight fitting garments on mm -hmm. because then there's no barrier to that friction, especially with jeans. That's like your worst nightmare, having some jeans on and no underwear going commando. No, not with jeans, okay? Because that's, that that's is, called real friction right there. Yes, <laughs> major, major friction. And the last thing I would like to say in reference to friction, women with LS, even if you just have a small area, is to really make sure that along with using your moisturizer daily, that if you're sexually active, you want to use a lubricant, even if you're not having pain with sex. You don't have to use a whole lot, but... Definitely use a small amount of lubricant because we're in the preventive stage. Got okay? it. So we're Once again all guilty. We can. <laughs> yeah, it happens, right? But why, why would you think to use that? Right. right? Yeah, because we are trying to prevent friction at any cost. Love that. So the the word of the day is friction. 
Yes. That is the day. That is the, I'm going to, the title, Friction. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Dr. Sin, thank you so, so much. If any of my listeners want to get in touch with you, how can they reach you? Well, multiple ways. I'm on all forms of social media at Dr. Sin. OBGYN. I do uh, lives every Thursday at seven on Facebook, 730 on Instagram, where I share beauty tips in reference to the private phase. My website, which shares everything that I do, is drsinobgyn.com. And of course, my product line is called Beauty Below. And you can sign up for all of our promotions at Beauty Below MD. Dot com. It was important for me to add the MD because my products are made for women, keeping in mind women of color who have additional issues with the skin down there. And it's made by a woman who happens to be a gynecologist. Love, love, love that. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us, spreading your knowledge. I can't wait to talk to you again. And I'm going to definitely be catching up. Well, I've already caught a bunch of your your lives, but I will be also doing that in the future. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. That was awesome. So now we are going to see if the ladies in the chat have any questions, any comments, and and we will get those answered. So the I I learned so much today. Lord <laughs> of mercy. I did not know. So uh, yeah. I well, thought I was educated. <laughs> you know, I love talking about it because we don't talk about it enough, right? Yes. And for most of us, what did our, our mothers or aunts or grandmas teach us? Not you know, much. Keep it clean <laughs> and keep your legs closed, right? Yes. Right. Yes. And, yes. you know, what they gave us was limited because what they had was limited. They didn't have a lot to give because no one really shared those pearls with them. And so I feel blessed to have a platform where I can encourage or empower women to really talk about the private face. I, I love that. So Jacqueline, she has a three parter here. She says, thank you, Dr. Sin. I learned a lot from this and signed up for notifications on your, I think that was supposed to be lives. <laughs> Super excited about this. I oh, no, that's question. correct for my line, my product. Oh, her line. Yes. yes okay. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Awesome. You're uh, super excited about this. I have a question I wanted to pass along from someone in the group. She says, should I wait until I am pain irritation free before doing any significant hair removal, IG laser? But the hair means that I struggle to get pain irritation free. And then, and then the next one, am I doomed to be in a hairy pain cycle for all time? <laughs> no, you're not doomed. You're not doomed at all. What I would recommend, so anyway, when you go to get laser hair removal, they want you to have some hair down there anyways, okay? Okay. Because they need that hair so the light can be directed to the hair to remove it. So what I would recommend is pick a month that you are like, I'm not worried about going anywhere, doing anything. This is just what tell your partner just what's going to be for this month. OK, and leave it alone and see if that helps you to get a little bit more pain free and already have yourself scheduled for your hair removal process. And it's usually about, it depends on the on the machine that's being used, but for some women, it's about a total of anywhere between three to five treatments oh, okay. for the hair removal and we space them out. Okay. And so in the meantime, because I know who asked this question and she, she is, she's getting some benefits from using the steroids and things like that. But her issues, like when she is walking and she's doing the physical things, she gets really, really irritated. The the hair is really irritating her. And I know eventually she does want to do the laser. So Mm -hmm. she also doesn't want to irritate the LS by doing any kind of shaving or things like that. So I guess 
in her case, I mean, we kind of talked about is just keeping it kind of trimmed and doing maybe the powder that would. Yeah. So my recommendation would be to definitely trim it as much as you can uh, with your garden tools. That's why I like to call the tools that we use to help with the hair down there. You want to make sure that you're using trimmers that the tips are dull. All right. You don't want to accidentally nip anything uh, down there and definitely get some powder that is a cornstarch based powder. They're easy to find. You go on Amazon, you can find plenty options and just put it in your hand, pat it on the area and see if that helps. Now, yeah. some women who wear underwear when working out actually find a little bit more irritation. Mm -hmm. Some women don't. So if you're using underwear, maybe try to go without the underwear, put on the powder and see if that helps. And you want to get those garments off ASAP as soon as you finish working out. Mm, good, good tip. All right. So Maria says, thank you for taking time to talk to us about our private faces so many great tips i know right maria oh you're welcome thank <laughs> you for having me jacqueline is back she says when i swim my process is coconut oil bathing suit swim change out shower off coconut oil is there something else i should do i love your process you want to make sure that you don't sit too long with those swim bottoms on even if you leave the swim top on you want to make sure that area is dry. And there was one thing I meant to say when we were talking about just our hygiene habits is I can, when I can cut we, it in. OK, yeah. When we be dry down there, we always, of course, want to make sure that our towel is dry, is not damp. But sometimes even using a towel down there can be irritating. So I perfectly I feel it's perfectly OK to use a hair dryer. Just do not set it on high. Set it on mild, okay? Okay. Blow, blow, blow. Make sure you're nice and dry. And guess what? You didn't irritate the skin with aggressively using that towel. Yes. So that may be something she can add to her process, okay? Mm -hmm. And go ahead, once some swim bottoms come off, apply either the cotton underwear. I would still say cotton if you're out in the sun enjoying the day because you will be sweating and you need to absorb that sweat. But if if you're not out and about and it's not hot, you're silk underwear. OK, love that. All right. Jennifer, thank you, Jennifer, for joining us, even if it was a little late. She said, what what's what are the best moisturizers for someone allergic to coconut oil? Well, Jennifer, first, let me just say that I personally have a moisturizer for women in my Beauty Below product line that will be launching the end of this summer. You can sign up at beautybelowmd.com. In the meanwhile, you could try a little bit of olive oil and see how that works for you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we have Maria. She says, what are your thoughts on hot tubs? I really do not like hot tubs for the private face unless it's your own hot tub. Public hot tubs, I do not recommend, oh. okay? There's a lot of bugs that can thrive in hot tubs. Okay. Now, when it comes to your own personal hot tub, it's okay to use it, but you need to get out of that. Don't be in there forever, okay? Right. Sometimes that kind of defeats the purpose if you're only in there for, you know, 10 minutes. But if you're in a hot tub for 10 minutes and your hot tub is connected to your pool and then you take a dip in your pool, you kind of cool the area down, get back in your hot tub, then you're OK. But definitely avoid ex long, extended periods of time in your personal hot tub. Avoid public hot tubs. Got it. All right. And Jacqueline has another question from someone in the group. She says, are th where... Oh. This Ask is good. where an electric trimmer falls on the worst to best hair removal options. Okay. Very good question. And we neglected to talk about electric trimmers and it would fall in between sugary and the depilatory cream. Okay. All right. And you did mention to use one with a dull, with dull blades. Now, no, and no, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no? No, no, no. You want a sharp blade. 
Oh, okay. Okay. I'm like sorry. I thought you said with the trimmer. Okay. Oh, with the scissors, when you're trimming with scissors, the points mm -hmm. of the scissors, you want those dull. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she does, if you go on her channel on Instagram, and I don't know about Facebook, but I know on Instagram, she has a whole live where she went like from best to worst trimmers on there because I watched yeah. that one. <laughs> it, I have way more information actually on Facebook. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm able, because, you know, I wear my readers when I'm on Instagram, it's hard for me to see all the questions, but on Facebook, I really engage with the audience a lot more because I can see the questions on my on my desktop. And, right. and there's actually more lives on Facebook than there are on Instagram because that, that's where I first started doing them. Awesome. So, yeah, definitely follow her because there's a ton <laughs> of information about our private face there. So awesome. All right. So Jennifer says, awesome. Thank you. Maria You're says, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Right. These are great questions. Yeah. Jacqueline, did you have any more questions before we close up? Jacqueline is the queen of questions. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. So like I personally, I have, it's a shick and it has like the razor on the one side and then it has the trimmer on the us the electric trimmer on the other side so i think i guess it was made for the bikini wax thing and i just pretty much i use that to kind of just groom just to, well i used to use it i don't even do it anymore i'm just all natural now but i do i i used to like trim it down with scissors then i would use the electric trimmer to go mm -hmm. even further down and then i would shave so that's I was just doing all kinds of things to my poor private face. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that when you have LS, that, you know, you have to be more aggressive with protecting the private face. The, the shaving part is just not the best option. But if you're not having any problems with it, then it's probably OK to continue. Just really make sure that your process is good, you know, that mm -hmm. you're in a shower, you've already washed, the skin is nice and warm. If you can't shower, you want to get a nice hot washcloth and apply it to the area and let it set for about 10 minutes because it's going to open those pores a little bit better. Making sure that you're applying a moisturizer to there. And any woman who's removing the hair down there, it's important to exfoliate. You do not want to do it right afterwards. You want to wait at least 72 hours before you exfoliate. But if you have LS, I do not want you using any mechanical exfoliators. You might want to consider a very, very mild chemical exfoliator. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever exfoliated. Okay. <laughs> I am learning so much. This is awesome. All right. So Jacqueline says, ha ha. Nope, I'm good. Thank you so much. It was absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that is everyone's questions. And once again, thank you so, so much for coming and just dropping all kinds of gems because this was and a learning, learning experience for me. And I know it's going to be for a lot of other women. Cause like, just like you said, we're not told much. We have, we're figuring this yeah. all out by ourselves. It's and, like trial and error, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So to hear from an expert is amazing. And I can't wait for your line to come out because I already know a couple of products I want. And <laughs> um, it's going to be amazing. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me. Woo, another amazing conversation, right? I hope you learned so much because I know I did. I mean, I've been shaving all kinds of wrong. I need to go get me some moisturizer, some lube, Oof, too many things. Make sure you are following Dr. Sin on all the social medias you are on. Her links will be in the show notes. And check out her book and her new beauty line. It sounds amazing. I already know a few products that I'm getting. And stay tuned. Make sure you follow me on Instagram because... We are going to go live with Dr. Sin really soon. And I want to make sure that you get notified so that you can come and ask her your questions 
live. As always, shoot me an email. Let me know what you learned, what aha moments did you have? And if you have any questions, that way, if you can't make the live, I will make sure and ask them for you. My email address is kathy at lssupport.net. Next week, we have even more amazingness for you. I'm bringing back a listener favorite, Jacqueline, author of the Lost Labia Chronicles. If you're not reading that blog, you need to go in the show notes and click that link. Go and sign up because she is amazing. I feel like I'm wor- I'm using that word out this episode, but there are so many crazy, amazing things in this episode that we are talking about. So She's going to be coming on next week. We are talking about all things lubrication. Okay, so if you are wondering what lube should I use? Or if you're like me and you were like, what? There's different types other than brands? What? Yeah, that's me. Um, You have got to come back and listen to next week's episode. So make sure you're subscribed so you get notified and you're following me on Instagram, because you know I'm going to let you know. All right? All of the links, everything we've talked about is in the show notes. No worries. I hope you have an amazing week, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!